I just got the Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate Certification, and now I want to talk about it. Before we get in the video, do me a favor and like the video and subscribe for more cybersecurity and hacking content. Hi, my name is Kaiser Clark. I'm a cybersecurity professional. I currently work as a full time penetration tester, also known as an ethical hacker. I have six years of experience in the field, 13 certifications a bachelor's degree in cybersecurity, and I'm currently working on my master's degree in cybersecurity. So what is the Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate? So the certification proves that someone has a basic understanding of security concepts, security monitoring, host-based analysis, and network intrusion analysis. Furthermore, the exam that you have to take and pass to achieve this certification is called Understanding Cisco Cybersecurity Operations Fundamentals. And that's a key word, fundamentals. So this certification is really geared towards beginners or people who have no experience in cybersecurity looking to break into the field of cybersecurity. So if you currently work in IT and you're looking to break into cybersecurity, this will be a good certification to achieve, especially if you want to become a SOC analyst, cybersecurity analyst, or maybe even a cybersecurity engineer. I don't believe that this certification is for people who are already in cybersecurity looking to elevate their career. So you might be wondering, Kaiser, why did you get the Cisco certified Cyber Ops Associate certification. And the reason why is because three years ago, or almost three years ago, I passed the Cisco Certified Network Associate, that's the CCNA, it's a networking certification. And Cisco certifications last for three years, and I used the Cisco Cyber Ops Associate certification to renew my CCNA. I didn't want my CCNA to expire because CCNA was honestly one of the hardest certifications I ever achieved, and I really like having a CCNA, so I didn't want it to expire and I got this certification, the Cisco Cyber Ops Associate, to renew my CCNA. Now there was other options to redo my CCNA. However, I decided that this one was the best for me and let me tell you why. So the first option to renew my CCNA is by doing Cisco Continuing Education courses. And basically they have courses that you can take to like a week or two, maybe even three weeks long. And they're honestly kind of quick and they're honestly, in my opinion, they seem kind of easy because there's no exam attached to it. You kind of just got to sit in a class and pay attention. I'm assuming I've never done this, these types of classes, so I, I don't know for sure. Um, but what I do know is I didn't want to do it because they cost like $1,000 or maybe more than that, like $1,200. They were very, very expensive. And I didn't want to spend that kind of money to renew my CCNA, even though it would have been probably the easiest route. So the second option to renew my CCNA is going after the CCMP, that's the Cisco Certified Network Professional. So Cisco certifications, there's associate level and then higher level, the next level is professional. And there are a few different CCMPs that you can attain. So there is data center, there's internet service provider, and then there's security and enterprise. So for me, I would go after the Cisco certified network professional security because I'm a cybersecurity professional. So security makes the most sense for my career. However, I am not a cybersecurity engineer. I do think the CCMP security is a premium certification to go after if you are a cybersecurity engineer or aspiring to become a cybersecurity engineer. However, I am a penetration tester, so the CCMP security doesn't really have a huge impact on my career right now, so it doesn't make sense for me to go after that certification right now. Especially since the CCMP security would be a major time commitment and a huge challenge to overcome. And while I'm not the type of person to shy away from a challenge, it doesn't make sense to challenge myself when there's going to be little to no impact to my career, at least right now. So like I said earlier, the CCNA was a very challenging certification for me to obtain. It was actually the only certification that I currently have that took me more than one try to pass and the one of two certifications that I've actually failed. So going to the next level would be even harder for me to attain. So I would expect for the CCMP security to take me about six months of consistent studying. Furthermore, it requires not one, but two exams to get that certification. So overall it would be a massive time commitment that I just don't want to spend because I need to spend more time working on my hacking skills and getting more hacking certifications because those actually do impact my career right now in the immediate future. And that's where my interest and my passion lies is in ethical hacking and offensive security, not defense security and cybersecurity engineering and network engineering. And the third option was the Cisco Cyber Ops Associate Certification, which was the perfect blend between easy and cheap. Now, I don't want to say it's cheap because it did cost me $300 to sit for the exam, but it was a lot cheaper than those 
thousand twelve hundred dollar courses that cisco offers to renew your ccna so if you look at it in that aspect it was a lot cheaper to renew it that way especially since the cyber ops associate exam only took me about a week maybe two weeks of not very hard and not very consistent studying the past but that does not mean that the cisco cyber ops associate exam is easy by any stretch of the imagination and the reason why it's not easy is because it's a cisco associate level exam and cisco associate level exams are not easy like i said i failed my ccna the first try and uh, you need to have like an 81 and a half percent to pass that exam while most other certification bodies require like a 70 ish percent to pass so that's what makes cisco certifications extremely difficult but it was easy for me because you can see the wall behind me and like i said earlier i have 12 other certifications so almost all the topics in this exam i already knew so i would say i already knew probably about 75 to 80 percent of the knowledge and all i had to do was learn like cisco specific things in the book and then maybe a few other cybersecurity topics that other certifications doesn't cover but for the most part you know i pretty much skimmed through that book i didn't read the book cover to cover i probably only read like three or four chapters in full and then the rest of the chapters i just skimmed because i was killing the did you already know quizzes so i would just go through the book and uh, if i got a 90 percent or higher on the do you already know this quiz i would just skip that chapter and then if I got like a 75 to 89%, I would skim through the chapter. And then if I got a below 75% on those quizzes, I would read the chapter in full. So all in all, I probably read, like I said, three, four, maybe five chapters. I skimmed through uh, maybe four or five chapters. And then I skipped, you know, probably the same amount of chapters, four or five chapters, something like that. So I kind of already touched on like who this certification is for. I said it's for IT professionals looking to break into cybersecurity. Maybe if you want to become a SOC analyst or a cybersecurity analyst, or maybe even a cybersecurity engineer, but it's also really good for people who currently work in cybersecurity who have a CCNA like me who need to renew their CCNA, but don't want to challenge themselves too much because they got other stuff going on. Or if you are a network engineer who currently has a CCNA and you're looking to go from network engineer to cybersecurity professional with this certification you can renew your CCNA and then get a cybersecurity certification on top of it. Now this certification really isn't a heavy hitter in the cybersecurity community and I'm not entirely sure why. However, I will say that this certification is very comparable to the CompTIA CYSA Plus as a CompTIA cybersecurity analyst. However, because it's a Cisco certification and not a CompTIA certification, it is harder to obtain even though the questions are very similar and the knowledge is very similar they overlap a lot there's a there's some things in the cisco cyber ops uh, that isn't in cysa plus and there's also some things in cysa plus it's not in the cisco cyber ops associate exam but for the most part there's a lot of overlap between the two certifications and honestly i would put them on the same level because i do have the cysa plus as well so i really do know how to compare the two and i think they're very similar and like i said the cisco cyber ops associate is going to be harder to pass because cisco certifications require like an 81 and a half percent to pass whereas a cysa plus requires you know like 71 maybe 72 ish percent to pass a CompTIA certification so that begs the question which certification is better for someone's cybersecurity career the CompTIA cysa plus or the cisco Cyber Ops Associate. So in my personal and humble opinion, I do think that the CompTIA CYSA Plus as a cybersecurity analyst is better than the Cisco Cyber Ops Associate as far as getting into the field for your first cybersecurity job. And let me show you why. So here we are on Indeed, and you can see I searched for CYSA Plus in United States. So there is currently 700 plus jobs asking for the cysa plus let me zoom on this just in case you can't see once again cysa plus in the united states 700 plus jobs now let's compare that to cyber ops associate searching for cyber ops associate in the united states the results 21 jobs so once again let's zoom in so you can see it better cyber ops associate united states 21 jobs and I hate to point out the obvious but 700 plus jobs is a heck of a lot more than 21 jobs <laughs> 
So because of that, and that is really the main reason why I would throw in a cybersecurity analyst over a cyber off associate exam when it comes to breaking into the field of cybersecurity as a SOC analyst or cybersecurity analyst. However, with that being said, I don't think either one of these certifications is really going to be like the main reason why you get your first SOC analyst or cybersecurity analyst job. There are other certifications that I would recommend. So I would recommend like the OSDA, that's an offset defense analyst or the hack the box defensive analyst certification. I think it's what it's called. But both OFSEC and Hack the Box have blue team certifications that are hands-on certifications that's going to be miles ahead of both the CYSA Plus and the Cyber Ops Associate exam. And the reason why I think that is because hands-on skills is what matters in this field the most. Technical skills matter the most. And both CYSA Plus and the Cisco Cyber Ops Associate exam are mainly multiple choice. Now the Cisco Cyber Ops Associate exam does have a few drag and drop type questions and the CYSA plus has performance based questions which is more or less kind of like drag and drop and maybe a few like hands on things that are not really realistic but a little more hands on overall mostly not practical certifications they are knowledge based multiple choice certifications whereas if you go after the offsec OSDA or the hack the box defensive analyst certification those are 100% fully hands-on blue teaming certification. So I would get the CYSA plus first and then go get one of those hands-on certifications. If you're truly trying to make your break in into a cybersecurity analyst or a SOC analyst type position. Overall, I honestly cannot recommend the Cisco cyber Ops associate certification unless you are someone like me who just needed to renew their CCNA real quick. Or if you already have a CCNA and you're trying to break into the field, and you want to renew your CCNA and get a cybersecurity analyst type certification all in one go. So other, if you're not in one of those two camps, then I, I honestly don't think that the certification is worth it. Even though this certification costs less than the CYSA Plus, I do think the CYSA Plus ha is going to have more of an impact. It has more brand recognition. More people know what the CYSA Plus is. And you saw on Indeed, there's way more job postings for the CYSA Plus than the Cisco Cyber Ops Associate. So for those reasons, I can't recommend the Cisco Cyber Ops Associate. But if you're still watching and you already decided like, yes, the Cisco Cyber Ops Associate is for me. Kaiser, what do you recommend to prepare for the Cisco Cyber Ops Associate exam? And I have it, I have it for you. Here we go. So the first thing you wanna do is pick up a video course subscription on CBT Nuggets or ACI Learning, this is formerly IT Pro TV. So either one of these courses are going to do the trick, in my opinion, I've used both these platforms, the past certifications in the past, and uh, both platforms I could definitely vouch for. So you honestly can't go wrong with either platform here. Uh, they're the exact same price, and they actually give you the same exact practice questions. So you're gonna get the same practice at the end of the video course anyways. So. I would go with uh, whatever you feel like going with. Like I said, it's the same price and you can't go wrong with either one. Then after you do the video course, you wanna pick up this book. Actually, you wanna pick up this book before you start a video course because right when you're done with the video course, you wanna open this book up immediately. <laughs> and then you wanna read this book cover to cover. So this is the official cert guide and uh, it's a pretty thick book, but it's not super thick. There are thicker IT certification books out there and uh, it's gonna take you some time to read through cover to cover. However, this is gonna fill all the knowledge gaps that you get from the video course. Now you can read this book first and then do the video course. It's really just your preference. Personally, I'm more of like, I like to look at the visuals first and then I like to read it. But if you're the person that wants to read it and then watch the videos first, it's perfectly okay. It's really up to you and uh, you can't go on with either order, but I would recommend doing at least both of them. And then after you do the book cover to cover, you want to make sure that you are doing the practice exams that come with the book and then you want to do the practice exams that come with your IT Pro TV or your CBT Nuggets subscription. Like I said, they come with the exact same practice question of flashcards. Uh, go through all the flashcards, go through the practice questions. And uh, for me, I was getting like a 75% average on the practice tests and I passed the certification exam. So if you're getting 75% or higher, you're gonna be good. 
If you're getting, you know, low 70%, you're probably going to be okay. If you're getting below 70%, I think you are in danger of failing uh, the real exam on your first try. However, I will say the practice exams that come with the book and the practice exams that come with the video course are a lot harder than the real exam, in my opinion, which is why you can get a 75% average and then still get your 81 and a half percent on the real exam. And unfortunately, if you're getting below 70% on your video course practice exams, there isn't a whole lot of extra resources out there. There are a couple other practice test books for this certification. However, they're not very highly reviewed on Amazon and uh, not a lot of people have reviewed them. So I question their authenticity, so I can't vouch for them. But if I failed, then I would have went that route and I would have done those practice questions because the more practice questions you do, the better you're off you're gonna be for your next attempt. I passed my first try, so I have to go that route. Uh, if you fail your first try, I think that's really the only option you have. Um, I think going over bad questions is better than going over the same questions again because you don't wanna see the same question a bunch of times because then you're just gonna memorize the question and the answers and that's not how you learn. So you don't really wanna go over the same questions over and over. And the last thing I'll say about the Cisco Cyber Ops Associate is that this certification exam is not for brand new beginners in my opinion. It does assume that you have security basics under your belt. It is a hard certification and it will be extremely hard for you to get this as a first certification in my opinion. I would recommend going after a Concierge Security Plus first before you go after a Cisco Cyber Ops Associate or a CYSA Plus. If you don't have the Concierge Security Plus, check out this video where I talk about how to pass the Concierge Security Plus, which was my first certification and the certification that I recommend for all beginners who have no experience in the field because this is truly a certification that you can get if you have little to no experience in cybersecurity.